This weekend, Virginia International Raceway and the Sports Car Club of America combined to form a mecca for lovers of sports car racing. Almost 500 drivers in over 20 classes will do battle in a race for the gold. Since 1964, SCCA has been crowning national champions at its annual runoffs, the peak of the Summit Racing Equipment SCCA Road Racing Program. For the second straight year, welcome to the track that Paul Newman once called Heaven on Earth for the historic 60th annual SCCA runoff. The sun is starting to break through here at beautiful Virginia International Raceway as we kick off the afternoon of action for the second of our Haggerty race days here at the 60th running of the SCCA runoffs. Our broadcast today presented by Mazda. Great to have all of you with us. I'm Greg Creamer, joined by Larry McLeod, and we also have Hayward Wagner covering all the action for us down in pit lane. This is Spec Racer Ford, and you know what? This class debuted way back in 1983. It has gone through a number of evolutions but it just seems to be getting nothing but stronger. And it certainly is the case this weekend, as well as a huge field is set to go after the run for the gold in Spec Racer Ford 3. With more on that, let's get to Hayward Wagner. Good afternoon. Guys, there is so much history in this class. I just looked over on the grid and saw this t-shirt. I just wanted to get a quick shot of it. I'm betting this t-shirt is probably from my youth and childhood, uh, going way back to the Road Atlanta days when we had Valvoline support for the series. Uh, just great to see some of the history on grid. On the other end of the spectrum, we have our pole sitter, Morgan Burkhardt, 17 years old. Grew up in karting, first time here at the runoffs, puts it on the pole. The rest of this field, more or less, uh, is kind of a fraternity. That's the newcomer. You've got Russ Turner and Dave Ogborn here. Their plan is to run together. Dave was making deals with Morgan about how they were going to be on the start. But one name I want to point out before we go away, the number four car all the way up there, about 10 spots up, that's Denny Stripling. Denny's wife had surgery on Monday. He decided to stay with her on Tuesday and Wednesday, flew in for qualifying on Thursday, just had one session Sitting back a little bit further, I asked him, what does success look like today? He said, number one, a shiny and wrinkle-free race car. Number two, he thinks if things go his way, he could get to the podium. Well, he certainly has the skill to do that. He's done it before. There's no question about that. Thank you so much, Hayward. As we are getting ready to go here, there is the look of the 0-2 that he was talking about of rookie Morgan Burkhardt, his first, his first tire rack pole for this young man. I have a feeling it's going to be the first of many, Larry. Uh, he has just been remarkable this uh, this weekend. Oh my gosh, he absolutely has. And now I will say it's his first time driving at the runoffs. I don't think it's his first visit to the runoffs. <laughs> his his parents are very active SCCA workers, as well as getting award this week. So Morgan's growing up at the track, and here he is at what track he gets to be leading us into. Let's go through this map. Down into uh, turn one, it's going to be crazy. It's a bit of a carousel, increasing radius exit all the way up into turns two. And then, of course, the NASCAR turn three, leading to that bit of a bottleneck there at four, left hook. They'll run through the snake, the lower S's, and get a bit of a run going up the uphill, climbing S's seven, eight, and nine, and then have to just go full send around South Bend in that turn 10. Goes down a bit of a dip, back up to the corner you can see on the screen there. That's the Oak Tree Bend leading to Madison Avenue, that extremely long straightaway that goes a lot of it uphill, drafting, drafting, drafting in these cars. They'll have to sort it all out, and they get to the top of the hill. 14 starts the roller coaster, run on down to the coaster to the Hog Pen 17, that wild ride big dip and then down that bending front straight one more time yeah it's an incredible track here's a look at the drop from the top down through the roller coaster big big field here we're going to get to it right away as we said morgan burkhardt the rookie on pole outside of the front row the number 23 charles russell turner who was a player last year finishing second starting third the 108 of david ogburn and fourth franklin franklin futrell who won it last year getting his second gold medal Starting fifth, the 61 of multiple champion Brian Schofield. Starting in the sixth spot, the 19, another multiple champion in Bobby Sack. Starting in the seventh spot, the 07 of Sandy Satulo. Starting in the eighth spot, the 99 of Caleb Schrader, who's had a monster year in uh, 
Hoosier Super Tour competition this year. Starting ninth, a former champion, John Black, the number 17, starting 10th. The gentleman that uh, Hayward was talking about, the number four of Denny Stripling. Starting in 11th, the number seven of Justin Clotcherty. Starting 12th, the number nine of Todd Vanacore. Starting 13th, a multiple champion, the number 11 of Robeson Clay Russell. Starting 14th, the number 30 of Mac Harrison. Starting 15th, the number 68, a multiple champion in James Goffrey. Starting 16th, a rookie, the number six of Gian Claudio Angelelli. Starting in the 17th spot, the 55 of Sam Schechter. Starting in the 18th spot, the double zero of Scott Monroe. Starting in the 19th spot, the 48 of Chris Jenner, John, a former Formula V gold medalist. Starting in the 20th spot, the number two, uh, excuse me, the number 27 of Brian Cates. Starting in the 21st spot, a rookie, the 106 of Jace Petty, starting in the 22nd spot. The 123 of Sal Weber, starting in the 23rd spot. The 21 of Charlie Rogers, starting 24th. The 72 of Lee Hill. 25th will be the 77 of Andre Pereira, starting in the 26th spot. The 101 of William Hendricks, starting in the 27th spot. The 64 of Matt Gray. 28th, the rookie, the 171 of Ben Jacobs, starting 29th. The number 45 of Tom Burt, starting in the 30th spot. The 79 of Greg uh, Stephen Greenhill, excuse me, starting in the 31st spot. The number 12 of Russell King, starting in the 32nd spot. The 65 of Scott Ross, starting 33rd. Another rookie, the 42 of Craig Chase, starting 34th. One of the most experienced drivers in the field, Jeff Beck at the number 31. Starting 35th, the rookie, the 147 of Steve Spano. Starting 36th, the number 3 of Keith Frazier. 37th, the number 47 of Kenneth Riley. Starting 38th, uh, a rookie, but from a winning family, the 94 of Jeff Futrell. Starting 39th, the 98 of Craig Wheatley. And starting in 40th, the number 08 of Andrea King. Quick note here on Jeff Beck. Um, he may be starting way back in the field, but back when the runoffs were unfolding at Road Atlanta, he started a spec racer race in that era back outside of the top 30 and put it on the podium. So the guy knows how to come through a field. And also want to make note, we have a very special honorary starter here. We'll talk a little bit more about it. But the guy who is known as the father, if you will, of sports renown now into the SRF3 category, Bill King is here. He will be up in the start stand, and he will be our honorary starter, Morgan Burkhardt, winning the Tire Rack Pole Award. Uh, Morgan Burkhardt did, and uh, looking forward to how this one plays out. As I said, likely his first of many. And Larry, big field in this class. We could have a finish like we had in Spec Miata. We could have history, oh, yeah. too, here. You could have four of them coming across, and uh, there is our honorary starter there. Bill, take a look at the field coming down to him. This is going to be special. There are going to be lots of Y going into one. We've got alliances. They're going to turn into rivalries real quick. Absolutely. There he is, Bill King, looking the field over and waiting to send him off here as they come hustling down the 50th anniversary of the Spec Racer in Spec Renault category. Bill waves the green. We're going. Burkhardt gets a little bit of a jump. And the question is, is he going to be able to hang on here? Here comes the 23 of Turner and splitting them both. What a move. That was the 97 of last year's champ, Franklin Futrell. Yeah, Futrell and Russ Turner had a great battle in FB2 earlier this week. A little bit of a tension between them. <laughs> but at that point, Futrell pushes Russ Turner. And now is the two of them leading Burkhardt into NASCAR 3 for the first time. You know what? Some of that was jump. Some of that was that front straight. You can draft. Yep. It's that long. But look at this. Four abreast now as they start into turn four into left hook. Now heading into the snake at this point. A lot of these drivers already a big wrinkle there for the number six of Gian Claudio Angelini. So the little contact there. Look at the size of this field as now working through the exit of the snake, Larry. First time through the climbing S's. Yeah, and the draft helps a lot. You'll watch this field tighten up going up those S's just a little bit. They'll all sort of check up going around South Bend the first time. And let's see how they handle all of that movement, all that jostling around as everyone's fighting for those positions here on this opening lap as the crowd comes into Oak Tree for the first time. And it is a big field there. And you can see Burkhardt slipping to that third spot. And uh, like I said, this field is chock full of former champions. Little bit of a break uh, by, what is that, the top eight or nine there. Then a slight gap back to uh, the 55 of Sam Schechter at this stage. And you can see that lead group starting to ease away. I see a lot of big names in that front group. You got John yeah. Black, former champ in this group. You got uh, Bobby Sack, two-time champ. You got Schofield now pushing Ogburn. Trying to get past Burkhardt here, go into the roller coaster. Oh, so close here. And also keep an eye on the 99 of Caleb Schrader. He's at the back of that. 
and there was a bump. That is one of the top category drivers. The 61 of Brian Schofield clouding a curb. If Bobby Sack involved, boy, a number of those champions yeah. we were just talking about have been affected by that. Yeah, that was that was a big one there. Schofield got on the grass on the left side of the track, coming down a roller coaster as he just had trouble keeping the car together, got back over and got into uh, Sack as well as another driver. But what that means, a bit of a breakaway. There's Denny Stripling, only ran one uh, qualifying practice this week on Thursday. Couldn't make it here earlier, as we talked about. And now he's in the middle of this little bit of a battle going on with Justin Claudery right behind him. And then look at Bobby Sack, able to recover pretty quickly. Yeah, he was able to, uh, you know, he got off track. See him a little loose there, trying to round him up around the outside here. And don't know at Bobby. No, he had to tuck back in. But now, look like he's going to get a good run. Let's take another look at it here, Larry. Yeah, well, let's watch uh, Schofield and see Bobby Sack right behind him. Schofield going the outside of Burkhardt. You see here, he gets a little bit of the car on the left side, slows up. Bobby thinks he's going to go on by, and he comes in. He touches to the back of Burkhardt, who seems to be okay from it. But Bobby gets pushed wide. A couple other cars narrowly missing him. Yeah, I'm trying to get that. may have been... Well, I'm trying to pick up the number there. It was uh, I saw a seven, but not sure which one it was. So that could have been part of the issue. Uh, it's just that little bit of a graze here. So now everything's settled. And that means the 19 of Sack, the 99 there, who I talked about, Caleb Schrader, and the 68 as well of James Goffrey, another multiple champion. Yep. Uh, they all have some work to do to try and get up there because Franklin Futrell is your leader right now. Now you get Sandy Satulo back in that crowd as well. Another yeah. one is super fast, no matter what you put him in. But look at this crowd here as they're running down, coming off an oak tree. Look at that, just a whole bunch of them. But now they're going to get to this back straight, start drafting. You see pop people popping out right as they crest the top of that hill. And you can see that uh, car going over the rise there is John Black. Uh, but here is that group up front. Futrell, Charles Russell, Turner right there. And uh, these guys have been friends for a long time. But after that race you were talking about, yeah. there is maybe a little bit of ill will at this point. Just a and little we'll bit. we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, yeah, in that race, on the opening lap, as they went around turn four, left hook for Trell, might have run a little bit wide in his FE2 car, pushing just a bit of uh, Russ Turner. Russ was not happy at all about that. But in the end, Russ ends up uh, taking the win in that race, just barely over a great fought battle with, uh, with Franklin. But here they are again. These two are very familiar with each other. But look at this. you got a four-car breakaway, and Burkhardt's not leaving this train with Ogburn in there. Ogburn and Russ Turner are very close buddies. Those guys were playing poker last night <laughs> with Bobby Sack and Denny Stripling and all them. They know each other very well. So seeing those two buddy teammates are with Franklin Fertrell out in front and Morgan Burkhardt, the new kid on the block, right behind him. That's an interesting mix there for that breakaway. Well, from what you were telling me, those guys who were playing poker, it might be tough, uh, a little tough to get through tech because uh, you told me they might be running a bit lighter in the in the wallet. Yeah, I think Greg, Greg Miller <laughs> came out of there a little heavier in his wallet and uh, maybe may have thrown down some threats, say, hey, anybody finishes in front of Bobby, I may have to take him out. Well, then, right now, Bobby's pretty far back. A lot of folks may be trying to run from Greg. Big slide here going through five. Yeah, the 55 of Sam Schechter and the 27 there, Brian Cates, having a really, really good battle of their own back in the order just a little bit at this stage. Uh, but that's one of the things, 40 car field and uh, people that you've raced with all year, you know how to race them. And you may be outside of that top 10 and you're driving as furious a race as you've ever driven in your life. And that's what makes this really, really fun. And uh, yeah, right behind them sits the number 21, Charlie Rogers, open and off there. Looks like some, I don't know if that was a, I think it was just a shutdown marker that he hit that went flying. I thought it might be some damage. And uh, I can see the car trying to turn around. So might well be uh, able to continue here. Uh, as we're back in this pack just a little bit. Uh, that front group is really starting to make an escape right now. See what happened here. You can see the off. Ooh, came right across That's the track. That's the 68. Yeah, and was lucky to not get collected. There was a gap there. So back at it here. He now has some work to do. Probably got a little bit of dirt inside that radiator inlet. It's not a very big inlet on the front of these cars. You get any kind of dirt and grass up in there, and it'll make that car overheat in a hurry. Oh, you bet. And, you know, talking about the 108 of of uh, of uh, Ogburn, who's sitting there, that orange car sitting in third, he's got unfinished business. He qualified really well last year, yep. and in that messy, wet, you know, uh, conditions, yep. had an issue and ended up oh. finishing 25th. And look at this. Here we go. It is Russell Turner, Charlie Russell Turner, going for the lead. And Futrell not able to uh, do anything about that. He, I think he was more concerned at that point. He did not want Ogburn to get down and underneath. And uh, sitting back there is Morgan Burkhardt. Yeah, well, I think for Futrell, he knows that if Ogburn and Russ Turner connect, 
think they're going to be a tough duo to beat. Those two qualified nose to tail. They would find their own track space. In fact, they, for a while, were sitting first and third in qualifying until Morgan came up and jumped out in front of them. When those two are together and Russ is the one pushing, they are a dominant duo because Russ can follow anyone one inch off their tail. And when he does it with a teammate, they will hook up just a corner exit and push and push and push. So Fertrell wants to stay between. He doesn't want to let Ogburn get up there near his buddy Russ. Oh, and look how tucked in he is behind Turner at this stage, up through those climbing S's. Absolutely glorious to watch. And you would think then that if that pass is made, maybe at that point, then Futrell and Burkhardt would want to get together and work to stay with that really quick duo. As uh, continuing to watch the field, this is Chris Jenner, John, a longtime competitor in this category as well as others. And he was our Sunoco 260 Tuesday winner. And it's just a fun promotion from Sunoco. Uh, to promote their their 260 fuel and it's in in Tuesday qualifying uh, oh and he gets a little loose and then hangs on to it uh, the closest to the after the dot in your time at the end of Tuesday to 260 wins a nice supply of that fuel here and uh, was that John Black who it was like off way off by himself there, there? yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not sure if he was trying to break the toe or is uh, slow oh in the 47 of Kenneth Riley a quick off uh, for the New England base driver and see if he can get it going again and back and at it here. Let's hope he can. Struggling, it looks like, to get it restarted. Uh, looks like just coming into Oak Tree. Just locked it up. Yeah, a little bit there. As the, the way Oak Tree is, you got that dip down the bottom of the hill after South Bend, and it kind of rises. And if you're fumbling around alongside somebody, it gets very difficult to find your breaking point, and then the whole thing just plateaus. It looks like the thing locked up on him went around. So Russ now still with Franklin doing his best to stay between Russ and Ogburn. Do not want to let those two buddies hook up, and Franklin's going to stay there. And I have to say with, uh, with uh, well, wait a minute here. This is the number seven now. of uh, That's Justin Clotcherty going uh, side by side yes. with the 11 and Robus and Clay Russell. Talk yeah. about talent in that black number 11 there. Yeah, okay. Clay Russell, two-time uh, champ in this class, including 19 right here at VIR. One of the most spectacular finishes you're yes. going to see, <laughs> short of a spec Miata race yesterday. But it was a, a great race, though. There's some serious talent there. Clardy, he actually runs oval racing back home. In fact, Saturday night back up in Michigan, he had one of his oval races and decided to, you know, after that to come up here. Well, because when the race pays out like 20 grand that night, you got to stick around for those races. You bet you But you he do. can wheel a lot of different things. You can see him running right there with that former champ, as well as the other two-time champ right behind him, Bobby Sack. He's kind of surrounded. And then you got Caleb Trader, who runs all sorts of things out here. All four of these, five of these guys, a lot of experience in a variety of cars. And oh no, Bobby's a little bit slow coming around South Bend. Like he made a, like almost like it missed a shift, but in yeah. sequential, that's pretty rare. Yeah, that's a, a little interesting for him. He, I think oh. he's got more of a problem yeah. than that. He's really slow here. Oh. And remember, he had that off. Maybe something happened, and he's ducking back in to the uh, the oh, South yeah. End pit straight. Did he? Yeah, it's almost like maybe it locked into a gear the yeah. way it kind of like uh, uh, jarred on him a little bit. For the two-time champ, the 2021 two-timer, he is getting out of the car at the South Paddock, and he uh, is done. What a shame. And that all could have happened when he had that off, uh, trying to avoid, obviously, the 61 of Schofield. I did want to say the 99 of Schrader. I just want to point this out. When you have a good year, it's pretty impressive uh, to see. Uh, and Caleb was top in points coming in here in the uh, Hoosier Super Tour. Four wins, eight po or six podiums, six poles, but in majors competition, listen to this, Larry. Six wins, 13 podiums, 10 poles. Yeah. I mean, he had a season of the gods there. Really great year for him. Yes. Uh, but you got to come here to VIR to the runoffs. <laughs> exactly. Now you get to get a run, run against all those cars maybe you haven't seen all year, and that's what makes this thing an interesting winner-take-all scenario. Well, and in Spec Racer 4-3, we have three drivers that have a shot at that super sweep. Uh, Caleb Schrader, one, Schofield, two, Denny Stripling, three. And uh, none of them are in that lead group right now. And Stripling is the one who's best placed. God, these guys have just been at it side by side, lap after lap. Just phenomenal to watch Cates here in this duel with the 55 of Sam Schechter. And even swapping positions left and right, Larry, the guys behind him have not been able to find any advantage. Well, that's Chris Jenner, John, behind him, who's done a whole bunch of racing in uh, Formula Vs as well. So he knows how to race in a tight pack. He knows what he's doing in this group there with uh, Sal Weber right there behind him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jenner, John, a gold medalist in Formula V as recently as 2020 at Road America. So uh, just some really good 
uh, racing going on back in this pack. Unfortunately for them, it's 12th and back at this stage, uh, and they're a, a bit off of that lead group. Stripling sits in the four, uh, fifth spot right now, which is actually a great, great race for him because he started in 10th. Yeah. So uh, you know, a lot of experience. And so missing all those sessions, uh, obviously, he's, he feels pretty good in these cars. Yes, he's very comfortable in these cars. Again, he's part of that trio of buddies along with, uh, <laughs> with uh, Dave Ogburn and Russ Turner. They tried to help him get a better qualifying, but Thursday's qualifying with these guys were a bit chaotic, except for Morgan Burkhardt, was the only one really to make any inroads and, of course, put himself up on poles, still running in the top four. Denny unable to in that one session to really get it going, putting himself down. That may have led to some of the issues without a great qualifying. It's tough to be in that pack with the breakaway happened. And so now he's in this great little battle here with uh, Clay Russell with Clardy now getting shuffled back behind Schrader. But, uh, you know, these guys are fighting for fifth when they'd love to be fighting for first. And up front, look who's back in the lead. Franklin Futrell has picked the point back up over Charles Russell Turner. Third, David Ogburn in the orange machine. And your pole sitter, your tire rack pole sitter, Morgan Burkhardt, hanging on to fourth. You know, you can't have an event as wonderful as this without some great partners. We want to let you hear a little bit more from a few of them. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. <laughs> oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The all new three row Mazda CX-90. Okay, so pretend this is your race car. It's on the trailer and you have an accident. Ouch, at least your truck's insurance will pay for another one. Yeah, not so fast. Standard insurance won't replace your race car, whether it's in the trailer, in the paddock, in the garage, or the repair shop. But at Haggerty, we can protect it for what it's really worth anytime it's off the track. No matter what or where you race, offer less than a set of race tires. Haggerty, let's drive together. We are back. The run for the gold in Spec Racer 4-3. And uh, we had a, a moment unfold while we were in that break. Let's see if we can uh, pick it out here. And that's that great battle we've been following. Oh, and a big, I looked like he may have got help. That's Lee Hill. Wow. And I don't know whether he did it on his own or if he just got tinked into it. Yeah, they, they start going three wide into there. It gets a pretty tight there for Lee. Fortunately for him, he ends up in the grass. But these guys, again, look at this. Russ Turner just pushing Franklin. Just pushing him, not trying to pass. There's nothing going on here. Ogburn, though, he's probably not going to come to the inside. He just wants to protect. But look at Burkhardt. Yep. Pops to the outside and would like to be able to maybe drive around. And as this corner opens up, if you've got good position here, and right now, Russell Turner might keep that open. And then Burkhardt decides to tuck back in and not force the issue here. Because look at that, just that little bit of side-by-side. -side and Franklin Futrell, suddenly three car lengths. Yeah, Ogburn, I think, may have been trying to protect instead of just letting Morgan go all the way down the straightaway. Instead, yeah, they go and give about four or five car lengths out front to Fertrell to kind of get away. Now, again, but all three of these guys are smart. They are going to be very smart in staying in line to pull that back together before they come to the top of the roller coaster. Good look there. The number 45 of Tom Burt, one of our more experienced drivers in this field. Tom uh, is uh, uh, been doing this for a long time here and having a really good run at it. And one of my favorite cars in this category is uh, William Hendricks' car, that 101 in shadow black, carrying the 101 shadow number on it. Uh, you know, I, I love some of the, uh, the uh, creativeness uh, that the people have here. And, you know, when you see a car done with that kind of a liberty, Larry, you know that these people love the history of motorsports. Yeah, and he's just making his second runoff start. His first ran T3 at uh, the Sonoma back in 2018. So pretty cool to see him jumping into the mix here in a pretty deep field respect for Jeff Cruz. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, man, this battle, Brian Cates right there in the 27 sits in 15th now. And uh, he's got this guy chomping at the bit to get through, Andre Pera. Just uh, these trains of these cars that just work through and now head down the straight. But you can see that group up front just ever easing away at this stage here. And uh, Futrell, uh, that margin uh, at the line last time was 61 one thousandths. 
And now uh, he's uh, feeling some pressure here. And a big move here by the 77, taking a peek. That was the 77 of Para, and just couldn't find a way around Chris Jenner, John. Just couldn't quite get. But look at this now. Fertrell gets, uh, gives up the inside, lets Russ Turner take that, that uh, pole position again here, going through turn one. This is all just sort of playing the game. No one's trying to actually win the race at this stage. All four of these drivers, I had a chance to talk to each of them throughout the week. All of them were just saying, let's get the breakaway. Yep. Let's disappear from the field. Get us to three to five laps to go and then figure it out. Well, here we are with six to go. We may be closing in on go time here for some of these. And I suspect that Ogburn and, uh, and Russ Turner desperately want to get hooked together somewhere within the last three laps. You know what? Something that I'm seeing here, too, uh, it looks like Futrell is having to drive that car a bit more aggressively uh, to stay. I saw him run a little wide coming through left hook and then up and over the curb into the grass. Uh, it just seems like he has to work a little bit harder right now than Charles Russell Turner well, does. Interesting you say that. Ogburn says that uh, that he is, Franklin Futrell is the hardest driver to follow around here because he runs a very loose car. The car is always dancing around, mm -hmm. just the back ends move, and everyone else is a pretty predictable, balanced car. Not Franklin, and I think what you may be seeing is some of the lutists in that car. Franklin loves it, it's just his thing, but everybody else, it becomes a bit of a wild card throw in that they have to deal with. So you say he likes a car with a bit of rotation. He does. <laughs> Well, you know, hey, two championships, uh, yeah. th that, that says a lot. Now, this is an interesting little moment here as a big, big move to the outside by Futrell trying to crack the draft, see if he could break it a little bit, and nobody biting, and he immediately yeah. realized, ooh, I better get back over and uh, covered it. I think he got a great run off Oak Tree, and rather than just sitting back, he figured he'd just go with it. Didn't really interrupt anybody because he had such a head of steam going up that uh, Madison Avenue, was able to pull away up there. But now he does leave the buddies, and I keep talking about it. I'm telling you, you cannot overemphasize alliances here in Spec Ford. Ogburn isn't as good at pushing Russ Turner as it is the other way, but Russ at this point has been, I would say, almost controlling the race to this point. Yep. Russ is not going to let Dave pull in front of him. Russ is going to make sure he's the one pressuring Futrell out in front. And you saw Franklin Futrell give a big look in his mirrors. Yeah. Where are they? Uh, what do I need to expect? Anything here into turn one? And You know, we've talked about, you know, Everybody talks about the long back straight here, Madison Avenue. Well, turn that run from the exit of Hawkpen down to one is almost as long. It bends a little bit, so it doesn't look as long, but it is. It is very long, and the second half of it is almost downhill, so your trap speeds down the front straight are just about as good as they are going down the back straight, which is mostly uphill. So it is very fast, deceivingly fast, and then ends in this downhill braking making it very, very difficult. Interesting, I want to point out the number 123, the second car in that train, Sal Weber. I believe that might be Russ Turner's backup car. So Russ having, right. and that's the car actually that Denny Stripling drove at the Watkins Glen Super Tour this summer. Those two blue car, were they were just hooked up the whole weekend. So that's a really good car that he's leading that train with. And I'm just loving, obviously, this battle that we're watching here uh, back in that order just a little bit. Uh, and. Uh, it's just every lap, they're just swapping positions left and right. And the 101 has uh, moved up a spot now, and Hendricks picking up a position there as well. And look at these guys once again. The margin between these guys now and the rest of the field is about 10 seconds. They are just in another in oh, another got right off. now. Oh, trying to pick that number up. Couldn't quite get it there. Didn't uh, just had an off. I mean, that happens. Exit of that uh, really quick turn three, the 65 there of Scott Ross, one of the rookies in the field. Yeah, a couple of rookies, including our pole sitter, Morgan Bernhardt, who's running at the front. You talk about experience between Franklin Patrell and Russ Turner. These guys have been racing together since they were kids. And then you got uh, 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 Dave Ogburn, who's been racing these cars for a better part of a decade now. And then you throw in the 17-year-old rookie who was on pole in the middle of this. He, to me, might be the mild wild card in this group because these other guys may not have got a lot of seat time against him. He's been sitting back and watching this play out in front of him since yeah. the opening lap. He hasn't been any higher than fourth. He doesn't need to be. I'm really curious how that mature kid, and you know because you've had chances to talk to him and hear from him. Oh, He's, look at this. Ogburn down diving, gets down and gets past Charles Russell Turner and picks up that of uh, that second spot. But I agree with you yeah. that uh, they don't know what Morgan Burkhardt's yep. capable of. They, I mean, after qualifying, they know he's quick, yep. but what's his racecraft? And he may be a rookie here at the runoffs, but he is a two-time Full Send Sims iRacing Esports Spec Miata Championship Sim Series winner. Uh, so uh, he's he, he's amazing in the sim, and he's quick otherwise. See if we can figure out this might be our, our moment for the number 65 here. 
Oh no, oh. this is a wow, what a that was a top spin by the 21 of Charlie Rogers. Yeah. That thing just went around. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting here now with Ogburn in between uh, Futrell and Charles Russell Turner and Morgan just laying oh, look back. At the here. loose bodywork there, just a little bit on the front of Russ. I wonder if some of the pushing that he was doing on Futrell earlier That's has kind of loosened point. it up. But now that you've got uh, Ogburn in front of Russ, watch Russ the 23 get up underneath Ogburn as they come off the corner. He's so good at exiting Oak Tree. Morgan also right there. We'll see if they, those two decide to pop out and push past Futrell at some point, if they can get the ideal run one of these next four trips around Oak Tree. Well, we're two thirds of the way done. We're working lap 11 of 15 here. And oh, Og, he, he was, do I, don't I, do I finally? decided to go and immediately Russell Turner went right with them. Yep, there they go. They were I'm sure they're talking to each other. They make the pass together and now they're gonna work together to keep Franklin behind him. They're gonna kinda of gang up on him a little bit. I know that Russ wants to win this race as bad as anybody, but if his buddy Dave can do it, you know, it's gonna be pretty exciting around that team. You know, three fast guys and a Denny are going to have a couple of beers to share tonight. <laughs> and look at the run that Ogburn got down through uh, Hogpen and just opened up a margin of a couple, three, four car lengths there alone. Now that's all going to evaporate as uh, Russ Turner gets the toe here and brings everybody else with him. And is Turner going to make the move? He looks and then decides, nope, not yet, and just tucks right back in again. Uh, oh, and there's some hand signaling going on. As you can see, Franklin Futrell giving some uh, some uh, ideas on, uh, hey, let's start working together again. I, here, I think guys. we're okay. There were multiple fingers in that wave. It wasn't yeah. just a single one, as may have happened in the FP2 race earlier this week <laughs> between them. But these guys, there's a little bit of wave. You say, hey, I'm going to stay behind you because as they came into the breaking, going into one, Russ definitely kind of moved over to make sure Franklin didn't pop. So uh, you can tell Russ is driving both out the front and out the mirrors behind. And that's the interesting thing to me. At this stage, for. Um, Ogburn with the way he seems to be able to ease away from them here at a certain point does the 23 of Russell Turner say well Futrell was easily able to stay there do I let him through and have him allow us to uh, to draft each other here but already they've closed up but notice that the radiator duct on the 23 has oh. seriously closed up here. And Morgan just dropped back. I think he might have slid coming around oh, no. uh, South Bend. So he may be out of this too far back to do much. And now it uh. turns into a three dog fight. Just that little, well, South Bend, man, it is such a tricky, he's got problems. Yeah. I think he's, he may have a right tire down. It does kind of look like oh. that. They have caught a tire coming up the S's or something. Like that. So unfortunately, your pole sitter is going to end this thing right next to Bobby Sachs' car down there at the South Tower. So it is a three dog fight with the two teammates now ganging up on Futrell. The rookie fairy tale story comes to a close, but fear not, folks. He will be back. I think he's got a long career. He's, as you said, 17 years old yeah. and on pole in his first ever runoffs. Uh, his name will be around for a long, long time. And uh, But then there were three. Yep. And just three laps to go for these three. Like I said, I've been talking to these guys all week. They, they were thinking it might come down to some combination of this, and here they are, just like it played out. I remember asking Dave, I think it was on Tuesday, I said, hey, look, if it's you and, and Russ and maybe, uh, maybe Denny, and you're coming off a hog pen that last lap. Look what do you at that do? push, though. All three. Oh, my goodness. And now they're three abreast. The gloves are off. It is go time. And Futrell, third to first, <laughs> with a big shove. Turner going to square up underneath and try and get back into that lead. Can he hold it? He's got, does Futrell have enough overlap? Turner gives him room, opens the door up. Now through turn three and up into left hook. And position is everything here. And down to the inside goes Futrell, sticking that firmly. Now back in the lead. There's that rotation we were talking about. Yep, that car just dances all over the place. But oh, such man. control to keep the thing where it needs to be. Amazing. That outbreaking maneuver into one. Totally unexpected, I think, from the other two. Franklin right to the front. And look at this. Now they're going to go side by side in the uphill S's. Nope, going to hop in behind. And uh, yeah, good cool. idea there. Futrell a little wide there. That could hurt his run wide again. Once you get behind in those S's, it's tough to get back to the apex. Dials it up there. But guess what? Traffic coming up here as well as Futrell gets a little bit of a margin, but they're coming up on the back of the 0-8 of Andrea King 
And great job by Andrea, yes. seeing the flaggers. But look at, look at that. They're Here's just the trying to get any kind of traffic they can, Larry. <laughs> Andrea's saying, leave me alone, guys. Just go. I was just trying go. to get out of your way, man. <laughs> but look what it did. That was that actually helped Futrell hey, a little and bit. Look at this. And Franklin's trying to use her as a little bit of a pick if he can. Ogburn's going to be desperate. Remember last year, Ogburn got tangled in a late race uh, lap traffic that he was trying to get around. Everybody get able to get around Andrea this time. That's great. She's awesome. Her, uh, she's been in the runoffs a couple times. That yep. runs Spec Miata. She runs here in Spec Board. And get a little bit of camera time for her. I'm sure the dog Enzo is going to be uh, pretty cool to say, hey, my mommy's on TV. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. They're from Land Lakes region, my home region originally. And uh, great to see it here as we come around to complete lap 13. Two to go here. And the one thing, uh, Ogburn, he seems to have, in terms of by himself, more speed than these two guys if they're running along. But he really did not get out of Hogpen. And here comes Turner down to the inside. And, uh, whoa, Franklin thought about going around the outside and then had to cut back, and that lets Ogburn right into the mix. Yeah, Russ did not leave more than exactly one car width there for Franklin. They may even have almost touched their uh, right front to, to, sorry, right rear to left front, but so, so close. These two have been battling all week, as well as in that FD2 race. Ogburn now has got to pick his spot behind the unpredictable Ooh, back end. Turner wide. He got offline a little bit going into left hook, and it affected him. Then through five and into the snake. But again, there's really no place you can do anything there. So everybody line astern and another lap car up the road just a little bit. And here we go into the S's. And uh, look at that. Futrell trying to square it up a little bit. Oh, oh. Everyone's a little twitchy. 15, 14 and a half laps or 13 and a half laps on these tires. They are just like wrestling these things around. And this three dog fight is going to be tough. Three super veterans in this. All of them hungry. Your defending champ is the middle of the sandwich right now. Look at Ogburn. A great run off the yeah, tree. Huge. And uh, this is opportunity here for him, obviously. And you know what? They might catch that lap car on the way down through the roller coaster, Larry. And if they do, that uh, could be a huge factor here, as I think we're going to be coming to the white flag here. And that is the number 47 of Kenneth Riley that they're coming up on. Ogburn showed the nose for a minute and then decided, no, not this time. Oh, look how close they are. You can't put anything between these three. They're going to see white flag this time by. This is going to be awesome. We could see a three-way photo finish between these three. Uh, it's entirely awesome. possible. Yeah. And oh, Ogburn sideways down through Hogpen. That's going to cost him a little momentum. And uh, looks like, is that lap car, are they going to catch? He just did a big point by. He sees them. Good man watching those flags. The 47 of Ken Riley really being savvy here, saying, go there. I'm not going to get in your way. And here's the big move for a second there. Futrell thought about it and then tucked back in again. Here we go, Larry. Final lap. And this one is on. More hand signals for Futrell this time. I'm not sure how many fingers he waved that <laughs> time, but it's getting interesting. All right, here we go. This is that really quick, long left-hander. Look at the run Futrell gets. And I think he was thinking of popping to the inside. And Russell covered it just a little bit, shallowed up his exit. And Futrell realized didn't have any place to go there. And again, Turner, he looks a little wide through uh, the eggs of the left hook, but it doesn't hurt him. And in fact, now he gets a little bit of a breather here. And Auburn had to dip the brake. He got yeah. such a run. Yeah, I saw a little bit of brake lights. He doesn't want to try and get side by side there. It's not worth it. So he actually breaks through them. Look at this. Like it's one car going up the S's. Look how close they are. This is incredible. Uh, I'm half expecting Futrell. I thought he might try a dive into South Bend. Uh, it's That's gutsy. But hey, it's the last lap. You're going for a national championship. So let's see what happens here. And uh, Ogburn really, he gets such a good run out of here. And I don't think if he does, and it looked like another good one, he's not going to be so gentlemanly into roller coaster this time. He will not be. In fact, he would love to see Russ just sort of dive to one side, and maybe he could pull a little bit of that draft. But Franklin's waiting, waiting, waiting. There it waiting. is. There it is. He's, he's going in. He's going inside. That's the side you want. And Ogburn, he now has a potential double toe, and then that evaporated. Futrell goes through. Ogburn says, I'm going. Tries the outside. Wasn't there. And he loses. Oh, and the Turner got it really loose, then had to lift and not get into the back of Futrell. And the back end stepped around, and Ogburn is through. But that might be just enough for Futrell, unless Ogburn gets the run of the gods out of Hogpen here. 
And let's see, I don't know that he's close enough. They draft well, but Futrell really on the move here. Your defending champ gives a wave. He thinks he's got it. He does, two in a row for Franklin Futrell. Ogburn makes a great comeback after last year grabbing second spot. Turner sits in third, that's your podium. And then some great battling going on behind them here. This is a look, uh, that's the 106 of Jace Petty. Uh, sitting in the seventh spot, Mac Harrison, Todd Vanacore, as they're coming down, uh, that is going to be seventh, eighth, and ninth for Clay these Russell guys. In the middle oh, of this. Russell yeah, is in the middle. The so Jace Petty got around on Russell. What a run! Waiting for timing to clear. He did. Jace Petty steals sixth away from a two-time gold medalist on that last lap. And here's this battle we've been watching this whole race. The number 27 uh, just. They've been putting on a back and forth show, and he comes through with the 101. That's and it looks like Cates is going to get around Hendricks. And the guy who laid in the race uh, went up three spots as Ryan in that number 64, Matt Gray in that Ryan sponsored car. Nice run. And look at the battles everywhere we look right now. The 171 of Ben Jacobs comes flowing through. Uh, it's just, this is what we love about it. Jacobs, uh, the 65 of Ross, who had that little bit of a moment. There's the 79 of Steve Greenhill. Ben Jacobs just made up two positions on that last lap, Larry. Right behind them, Jeff Beck as well. Yeah. So a nice run for the experienced Jeff Beck. He's been doing this for a long time, he has. Oh. And uh, wow. That, that orange car in this train, though, that I believe is the 94 Jeff Futrell. I believe he's the father of Franklin Futrell. He yep. probably knows what just happened at the front. He probably couldn't be happier, doesn't care where he finished, because he gets <laughs> exactly. to go party. And having a great little run there with the uh, 21 of Charlie Rogers. So, uh, wow, what a race, Larry. And I mean, you know, just watching that group up front of yeah. four ease away and then watching that high speed chess match yeah. and seeing uh, what's coming and then. Uh, and, and don't know whether it was the off that caused, you know, caused Burkhardt's uh, flat or whether the tire just got cut somewhere and uh, that's what caused the off. But, the, you know, then he dropped out of it. But, you know, keep your eye out for that young man uh, in the future here. But uh, an absolutely superb run for Franklin Futrell, just well judged. Uh, backing up his win a year ago to come out here in nice, equal, dry conditions for everybody and in just an absolute chess match with him. And, and these other two, these rivals that know each other very well, they're paddock yep. next to each other out here. And so they've got a lot of familiarity. They race together all the time, but this time it's Franklin's day. And, you know, the thing is, Franklin did it, as you said, in the wet last year and yep. the dry this year. Uh, that tells you complete package there yeah. uh, behind the wheel of that number 97 out of Augusta, Georgia for Franklin Futrell. And uh, that is one of the Comprent Motorsports machines. You see on the back of it, it says Rent Me. Comprent clearly preps yeah. a pretty good turnkey yes, hop in do. and go driving car. They definitely do. And that's the great thing about Spec Fords is you can rent these and you can get in these rides. The cars are about as equal as they get. It takes wheelman like that to yep. go and win championships. That guy really took it. And uh, how special is it to have Bill King, the father, 50 years ago of this class, essentially, here and uh, put on this kind of a show? And Franklin Futrell, helmet comes off. Look at that. And pretty soon a gold medal goes around his neck. Hayward, a two-time back-to-back champion. Frank got into pit lane. The first thing he says, I need a Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great race. Um, I kind of knew it was going to probably be between about five of us, and it was a bit between about four there till the end. Um, all through the race, I was getting a really good run out of hog pen and kind of like spec me out in spec racers. Sometimes you don't want to be leading coming onto the front stretch, but this race I did because we were getting such a good run through hog pen. It played off. I got a little loose getting into that uh, uh, into the back stretch there, but managed to slow it down great job with the guys from texas behind me i know they're probably probably not too happy but it was a blast i think you guys ran every possible order between the three of you through the uphill s's without an ability to put a piece of paper between the cars what does that feel like um amazing i mean it's just great to have the trust in these guys that we do i mean we all have adult beverages at night and watch video of each other messing up and making fun of each other and then we go out and just battle it out it's great it was a heck of a race, two in a row here at VIR. One more lap to go. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Thank you to Comprint Motorsports. My wife and kids are here. 
everybody back in Augusta, Georgia at Mecco Incorporated and uh, Boswell Oil. Thanks, guys. Absolutely fantastic run again. Uh, you know, that was the chess match, and he yeah. proved to be uh, the chess master here. And he is heading out now on his lap of honor uh, after enjoying this cool down lap. You know, anytime you win, it's great. But when you realize, I just repeated as national champion, uh, there's you want that cool down lap to last forever. I had this victory lap. Well, he's going to savor this one <laughs> just like he did last year. Two years in a row, he's becoming the VIR master. Yeah, and for David Ogburn and Charles Russell Turner in that mix, and for Osberg Hayward, a little bit Let's of uh, redemption from last year. David, it looks like an even 50-50 split of elated to be here and just disappointment that you couldn't get that last pass. And yeah, I just... The whole race, I just wanted to be in the top three, you know, right there at the end. I, I kept trying to get in between Franklin and Russ so we could work together and then, but I had a run on the back straight. It was a bit too late. You know, I, I, I'm not going to dive under him, you know, or, or for second, you know, because that potentially would just let Franklin walk away. And then when he locked up, rolled inside, checked me up a little mm -hmm. bit, and then there, uh, you know, just Franklin had a bit of a gap. So, I mean, it's, uh, you want to be second. I was third on the white. And uh, Franklin did a, a hell of a job to hold it off. He, he drives every lap. It looks like his car is going to be done the next lap. So You have been fast at the runoffs for so many years. Last year, such disappointment. Yeah. Growing up in the club, loving the runoffs. What does it feel like to finally make the podium? It feels very good. I started watching this race in high school. Yeah, it, it, it feels great. So, I, you know, it, it's like you said, it's mixed because it was like I could taste it. But, uh, man, so <laughs> it's it's a... Uh, I would say 60% frustration from not getting it, but 50% happy to go home with some hardware. And uh, it, it was a hell of a race with, with, with Franklin and Russ. Well, I'm told champagne is good for about 10% increase, so you should be able to get to that 50-50. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. We're going to bring up your, uh, your partner in crime here, Russ Turner. Big hug for these guys. You wow. said we had it. What is we that? Had it. We had it. You know, when, when you have a teammate out there, it gives you a huge advantage. And uh, I, I just made a few minor mistakes. Franklin was just superb driving. And we were, you know, unfortunately, we just didn't get the timing just right uh, to take him down. And uh, it is what it is. But I'm happy to come home third. Um, and I'm, I'm happy for Dave to, uh, to, to podium also. So a first and a third at the runoffs for you this year. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, not too shabby at all. And you may be thinking, uh, Ogburn's not that great at math, but I understood that completely because he gave it 110%. He absolutely did. And it was great to watch. And I'm disappointed in his interview. I told him, either you got to make us laugh or make us cry. I was on the yeah. verge of both there for a minute. But uh, no, I, I love Dave, Russ, Franklin. Oh, fantastic race. You know, one thing we, you know, we were so focused on that battle at the front, Caleb Schrader fought his way up into fourth. That was an amazing drive. Here we go, some highlights in this huge 40 car strong field, diving down into turn one. There you go, one, two, three, four, five abreast at one point, and right to the front from uh, splitting that front row went Franklin Futrell. Yeah, he knew he needed to be up there, wanted to stay away of any sort of fray behind him, and these are the kind of things the front runners needed to do. There's Ogburn, there's your pole sitter, there's Schofield. This may have caused the opening in the field, and Schofield getting down the hill a little bit, a little bit of a bump, got to the back of Morgan, separated this front four, and then it became this for about 15 laps. And it was amazing, and I wonder now if that contact with Schofield was not what maybe bit Morgan Burkhardt laps later. Did have a couple of spins. That was a Danny Sullivan that was spin and go uh, by the number 21. Beautiful job there by Charlie Rogers. And then after Burkhardt had his tire let go, uh, down to three it was, but it didn't get any less entertaining. These guys, the gloves were off. Oh, and after the battles they had earlier in the week in the other class, here they go, right where they picked up, where they left off. It is just beautiful stuff. Oh, so close racing, so tight, so much emotion. Uh, beautiful to watch. And I love the fact that, uh, you know, that Ogburn said every lap it looked like Petrell was going to be off the track. Here is Ogburn's last big lunge. Just couldn't quite get it. And uh, look at that, though. That is where that little mistake that Russell talked about. And he had to get out of it and loosen the car up, and Ogburn jumped on it. But for Franklin Petrell, the wet last year, the sunny dry this year, he is a champion again at Virginia International Raceway uh, and enjoying this lap of honor. A really special one when you repeat, Larry. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he is absolutely thrilled. I'm sure his dad down there, I saw him get out of the car and walk on up there as well. Uh, it's such a great feeling, the family together. And here you have it. That is your 
podium or your uh, unofficial results. Vitrell Ogburn and Russell Turner on that podium. But uh, the guy that is was super impressive, obviously, Caleb Schrader dropped back a little bit, fought his way up into fourth. Justin Clotcher, he ends up in the top five. Jace Petty, great run for the rookie. Robeson Clay Russell, Vanacore Schechter, and Scott Monroe completing your top ten. So, an absolutely superb spec racer, Ford three race under the watchful eyes of Bill King, who was the guy who started this whole program and oversaw it when it was back 50 years ago in Spec Racer. What a special day for the Spec Racer Ford 3 community to have Bill King here and for Franklin Futrell, second trophy, second championship in two years. Surely enjoyed bringing you this one for Larry McLeod and for Hayward Wagner. I'm Greg Creamer. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. More to come here at the 60th running of SCCA's National Championship Runoffs. My customer experience with Mazda has been absolutely fantastic. I'm probably not the richest person out here and they're extremely reasonably priced and you can buy parts easily and it's a class that fits both but what I want from a racing standpoint and what I can afford. We got into Mazda's uh, largely just because it's a fantastic platform and Mazda Motorsports has some of the best support for the grassroots racer in parts and technical advice and everything else so they, they make it easy for us to run these cars.